Hey, what's up guys? So this is gonna be really interesting. I'm here with John from Redenso, and uh, we're gonna be taking a look at why some cars cause BSM falses on our radar detectors, but other ones don't. So this is something I've been wanting to see forever. Yeah. So what are we looking at here and what's going on? So like you, when we started moving all of our engineering here, I was just curious, just personally, myself, of that exact question. You know, we pass these cars on the road all the time, and sometimes we go by the, the dreaded offenders, right? The Mazdas, the Cadillac, and it sets everybody off. But some, like some of the Fords, you drive by and nothing. Yeah. And we know these are all K-bands, so what is the difference? How come sometimes they go off and sometimes they don't? So to answer that question, what we did was we custom built um, actually a very special test set that lets me see in incredible detail what is coming from all these cars and record them. So I thought it would be neat to walk everybody through today two of the most common examples. Uh, we'll take a look at a Mazda, a CX-5. Which, which does false. A lot of radar detectors. Pretty much everything, yeah. Yep. And then we'll look at one that doesn't and help everybody understand why that's the case. Now, before we get into what that is, you're probably wondering, what is this that we're looking at here? Um, I know it looks complicated, but it's not that bad, I promise. Long story short, what you're seeing here is a visual representation of the radar spectrum. And you can see this moving part here. This is time. This is frequency, left to right. And then up here, you can see the amplitude, or the power output. So this is just a recording of a Mazda played back. You can see pretty high power. And importantly, it stays at a similar frequency. It almost looks like continuous wave. Mm -hmm. Now, over where Ariel is, we also have overlaid a actual K-band recording. I think that's a, a Decatur gun. Okay. And one thing that I'm sure that you'll notice is just by visually looking at it, these look pretty similar. We've got one frequency here. It's pretty fixed. It's yep. not jumping around and changing. We've got a nice spike over here. Even the power output looks pretty similar. Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty strong blind spot emitter to be comparable to a, a police gun. Mm -hmm. And we even recorded these at the same distance apart. So to answer the question, why does it false alert on a Mazda? It's because it looks really, really similar to a Decatur k -Van gun. Makes sense. Now, one thing that I do want to say before we move on to the Ford is um, I want to make sure everybody understands how radar detectors currently look for signals and, and why they make the decision to alert. Radar detectors, all of them nowadays, are not what I would call incredibly smart devices. What they do is they look for energy present within a specific band, so like within K band or X band, and that energy is averaged over time. So here you can see why this alerts, because it's a continuous pattern. You don't see any breaks here. This is one solid line going down. At one so it's pretty fixed frequency. Yes, so it's, mm -hmm. it's got the frequency component, it's in K band. Your power over time is high because there's no brakes. Which is what this big spike is on top. Exactly. And you've got decent power output. So it, this satisfies all of those criteria for whether or not to alert. So traditional radar detectors that don't have um, the ability to see things like this test equipment can, it's just going to trick them. And they're going to false alert. Makes sense. So we've seen the Mazda, and we know why that alerts. Now let's take a look at the Ford. Um, this is a 2018 Ford Expedition. Okay. And this is one that most detectors have no problem with. You can drive by them all day long, and maybe unless you have like MRCD enabled or something, it's not going to fall to a normal k -band. Right. Yeah. So looking at this signal, you can see that this looks a lot different than the uh, Mazda does. Um, one note I do want to mention, though, is you can ignore this signal in the middle here. I know that looks like a police gun, but that's just a byproduct of our test equipment. Okay, so this signal going left to right is what you're looking at. So these long, kind of horizontal lines. Scrolling, exactly. Okay. Now let's pause it so we can actually take a closer look. Now that it's paused, there are a couple of things to look at. First of all, instead of going up and down, in other words, that continuous frequency, uh, this is modulated in a couple of different ways. You have, first, time modulation. So you can see a signal, signal, a signal, signal, but in the middle there's nothing. Okay. So it's almost, it looks like a ladder. Right? Yeah. There you have the rungs of the ladder and then space in between. Um, so that's time. This is not a constant signal. So is it being kind of pulsed? Yes, okay. exactly. Pulse, 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 pulse yep. over time. Okay. And the other thing you have is you also have components of frequency modulation. Okay. And this is actually an incredibly powerful radar signal. Um, the amplitude is, is pretty high, but because it's frequency hopping back and forth, 
It's act, every one of these lines actually represents an excursion all the way to that part of Cayman and all the way back down. Oh yeah, it's coming back. It's not one frequency, it's sweeping across. And the key is, because it's moving so fast, it's not staying on one frequency long enough to have the power kind of build up and stack up. So to a radar detector, it doesn't even see most of this because it's not dwelling on that one frequency um, long enough to up the average power over time. Okay. So even though there's a lot of power here, because of the way it's sweeping, it's not right sitting at one space exactly. to trigger the radar detector. Yep, it's just going back and forth so fast that the detector ignores it. It doesn't look anything like a traditional police radar. Okay, and that's why I guess some cars like the Ford, for example, won't trigger a radar detector Correct. as a false alert. And oh, cool. this is probably a whole different uh, video to talk about eventually, but this does look a little bit similar to MRCT and MRCD, mm -hmm. which is why when you enable that on certain detectors, um, like the Escort Redline, like our Pro-M, uh, that is why this can actually increase falsing to cars that don't false to K-Gap. Uh, it's just, sense. what does the BSM look more like, sort of. Okay, cool, that makes sense. And then, so this pattern, there's of course different cars and they all have different patterns. Every car is pretty unique. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Cool. Thank you. This Absolutely. is awesome. Hopefully this was interesting for you guys. Um, there's a lot more that we can learn, and that's just kind of what we do. Cool. Kind of keep pushing the envelope and find the answer to questions that we've always wondered about. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing this. I never had a chance to see this yeah. before. Absolutely.